Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. That's right, we're going to talk about taverns and burning them down. No, <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, the clever uses of the torch in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to refer a lot of my comments back to Dungeons and Dragons 5e because I usually do. That's sort of how I work nowadays. The ancient torch was made from a few simple components to create light. And of course, it could also create heat, flame and stuff like that. But how do you actually make them? And yes, I am going to get to the main point, which is how do I use them in the game in a clever way? But I need to talk to you about how they are made. So that's what we're going to do. First thing, first component is the wooden rod or staff or stave. It might be just a branch. It could be all sorts of different things. It didn't even have to be necessarily made from wood. It could have been made from reeds. Anything like that, as long as it was relatively solid and wouldn't deteriorate too quickly. So that's the first component. The second component was the rags or cloth or some sort of uh, combustible material that could be wrapped around the end of the wooden rod or rod that you were going to use. And this is sort of the fuel. Now we also need an accelerant to actually burn the fuel itself. Now, what are we going to use? Well, apparently the Romans were using a coating of a flammable substance. They would coat the cloth with a flammable mixture of sulfur and lime. I think that's uh, very strange. Possibly that was in fact the case. I mean, I wasn't there during the Roman time. Nobody was. Uh, the problem with sulphur, if I remember, is that sulphur, when it burns, produces toxic gases. Well, certainly it's going to produce toxic gases if you throw water on it or expose it to water. Then you get sulphur dioxide, don't you? And that can pretty much kill you. And of course, if you expose sulphur and lime to water in any way, then it becomes more fire. <laughs> we get like Greek fire, isn't Sulfur and lime, part of the components of Greek fire from our histories. Oh, I don't know that's necessarily a good idea. But that also means you don't have to worry about the fire going out if you spill some water on it. This particular piece of information will become very important later on in the video. Okay, number four, probably more likely in terms of an accelerant for the torch in medieval times was something like a coating of oil or animal fat, maybe some grease, a bit of pitch, um, paraffin wax. Now, even tree sap would burn. It would burn slow, and that's sort of very helpful. We don't want to go through the, the whole process too quickly. There have been some suggestions that maybe bitumen or um, um, ambumen a bumen was used. I don't know that that necessarily would be the case because I think that would give off a lot of really nasty fumes as well and you'd wind up passing out and being quite sick from that. So I don't think that necessarily was used. Uh, I mean, try to burn tar. Uh, if you've ever seen a tar fire, it's not pleasant. So I don't think they would necessarily have used something like tar too, too much. Okay, so I want you to stick around to the end of the video because I will reveal a secret about torches in Dungeons and Dragons that I have been hiding from my players and from you for a very long time <laughs> and today is the day I'm going to reveal it. So stick around for the very end. What are the clever uses for the torch that players and dungeon masters can use in the game of Dungeons and Dragons? Now you'll notice I'm saying players and dungeon masters because I suggest to dungeon masters this particular video is going to be very important. I would say this is uh, extremely important. Number one, you can see in the dark for 20 feet with bright light. <laughs> oh my god, you stuck around this long and he's given you this sort of information. I do apologise, yes it produces light. And light is important because it allows you to see monsters and traps so you don't stand on things. So very simple stuff we're going through, the, the basics. We'll get more complicated, don't you worry. You can also use a torch and drop it down a hole to see if it has a bottom to it. Or at least what the depth of that hole might be 
if it does have a bottom. Yes, dropping the torch down there will work. Yes, you can also use a stone and cast light on it and drop it down there. The cantrip will work. You know, there are other things you can drop down holes that make light. I do understand this, but a torch is pretty useful. What uh, a torch is really useful for is number three, and that is to burn away those spider webs. If you're dealing with giant spiders and you see lots of webbing everywhere, that means they're probably using that web sense. Uh, they can actually feel the vibration through all of the webs that you are interacting or touching. So the last thing you want to do is have any involvement with webbing, right? The first thing, you see webs in a dungeon, you burn them. And what do you do that with? You use your torch. That's right, you use a torch. Yes, you could use Firebolt. I'm aware of that as well. Okay. Number four is you can light a torch on a wall sconce with your torch. You can also make sure that you uh, have your hands free to do other things by putting the torch into the wool sconce. Not that wool sconces inside a any kind of location makes any sense whatsoever, but apparently we are playing a fantasy game, so we don't need to necessarily worry about the reality of what was actually inside a building. Um, probably more likely candles rather than a torch hanging on the wall. Okay, number five, you can light your campfire. Yes, you could use your flint and steel. Yes, you could use your tinder box. But if you have a torch and you've been wandering around with your torch, you might as well use it to start the campfire. We all like to make things go boom, don't we? Well, I know I do. But you can light the fuse to an explosive with your torch. Yes, you could use a candle. Yes, there are other ways. But yes, you can light a, a fuse to a torch, uh, to an explosive. Right, what about that oil flask? Yes, number seven would be oil flask, oil spill, throw it on the ground, throw your torch at the oil spill or at the oil flask that's flying through the air and get about to smash on the ground and boom, you have fire in that location, which you can use as a barrier to stop other people from getting to you or set somebody alight. Obviously, the bad guys rather than anybody else, but <laughs> it just depends on what your accuracy is like. You can light up the moat to a castle. Of course, the first thing you want to do is you want to pour oil into the moat, which, of course, what is what used to happen. You know, they used to have boiling oil. They pour it out of the um, cauldrons over the side on people, but they would also fill up their moat with oil because the oil floats, and when you light that oil, voila, you suddenly have not just a, a watery moat, you have... A whole lot of flame. Who's going to come through that flame? Probably nobody. Not alive, anyway. So, flame on. Okay, we are dealing with monsters now. That's number nine. You're fighting the troll. It's time to burn the troll to stop it regenerating. Because if you don't burn a troll, they continue to regenerate. That seems to be one of the things that is pretty consistent in Dungeons & Dragons. Whatever version you are playing. My god, everything is falling apart now. Okay, number 10 is you can cauterize a Hydra head when it has been decapitated. You are fighting the Hydra, you lop off a head, but if you don't cauterize and apply fire in some way to it, you will have a whole bunch of problems. So we've got to do something about that. Torch time, number 11, and that is... You can use a torch as an improvised weapon and do one fire damage. I know there's a bunch of people who are laughing their head off and saying, really, Fred, one fire damage? I might as well just use a dagger and use a 1d4, which is still pretty pathetic, but it's better than one fire damage. But one fire damage makes an awful lot when you're fighting the right type of monster. Number 12, you can throw the torch into a cloud of fine dust and create an explosion. What sort of dust? flower dust. I did a video on flour. You'll know what I mean if you've watched that video. Yes, flour and finally floating in the air makes a great explosion. Right, number 13. You can use a mouthful of alcohol. I don't know that it necessarily has to be anything particular, but strong alcohol would be better, I suppose. And then you use your torch and you breathe that alcohol onto the torch. And now you can have fire breath and cook your enemies from a distance. Not that far away, but 
Still fun, sounds like a lot of fun to me. Number 14, you can use Mage Hand to extend the torch's light 15, 30 feet ahead of you and increase visibility in a dungeon. Yep, there are lots of uses for Mage Hand and that's one of them. What about number 15, a mobile cooking fire for roasting snacks as you are travelling. Hugely useful if you are a halfling or a hobbit and really can't stop at any time without having to eat. Number 16, you could mount your torch on top of your helmet so you can go hands-free in combat. <laughs> I know a lot of people are wondering how that's going to work out. Number 17, you can mount the torch on a sconce on the side of your shield to go hands-free. Problems again, I suspect, but let's not go into that. Number 18, you can use your torch with Mage Hand, create a target or a distraction for enemies. How is that going to work? One of the things that I've found is Mage Hand and anything goes well together. Number 19, very important, don't get stuck holding the torch as you become the prime target for enemy fire. Make sure somebody else holds the torch, not you, okay? Um, <clears throat> very important safety feature, that one. Okay, here's the big question. Does our torch, if you drop it on the ground, cause it to go out? And often in your games, I think you'll find a lot of people say the torch goes out. But actually, it doesn't. The torch continues to burn. What about on a wet ground? No, not like a big pond. But does a torch, if you drop it on a wet ground, cause it to go out? No, it won't go out. What are we talking about here, Fred? This is getting strange. Have you lost your marbles? No, I haven't. Does dropping a torch or plunging the torch into water cause it to go out? No. Well, maybe, depending on how you constructed it and what you used as the accelerant. Oh my gosh, this is getting very confusing. Stick around, you're going to like this bit, trust me. Why and what happens to a torch when you drop it on the ground or you expose it to water? Here it is. Look, oil and grease fires, and that's what you're dealing with with a torch, work completely different to normal fires. If you've had exposure to cooking, you'll understand this. But water and a torch fire do not go well together, okay? <laughs> Exposing a torch to a small amount of water causes that fire to spread and to flash flame. And it only takes anywhere from a quarter of a cup to half a cup of water to do that. In fact, in some cases, you don't even need to use that much water. Now, why is that? That's because when the water hits the fat, the fat is hot, it's burning, it splashes, it goes somewhere else. It creates more fire somewhere else because it's struck something else that's flammable. And there's a big flash burn. That's just a small amount of fire. What happens when we deal with a lot of fire? <laughs> Let's take that torch and plunge it, the torch fire, into water. It's going to create a larger flash burn. It's going to spread the fire again. And now the water is on fire. Or should I say the oil or fat that is sitting on the surface of the water is now on fire. This really changes the way things work in Dungeons and Dragons when you start thinking about what happens with a torch fire. Because if you do something like, okay, water, plunge into, with torch, what's going to happen? You will set your arm on fire. More than likely, your arm will be on fire. Quite possibly, your body will be on fire. And the torch continues to burn, just to rub it in. <laughs> and that's strange. And everybody thought the torch went out, I bet. How do you put out 
a torch flame. How do you do it? There must be a way. If I can't use water, what do I do? Just stand there and wait till it finally burns free and there's nothing left to burn away? Do I have to do that? No, no. You can actually put out your torch by plunging the torch into a bucket of dry sand. Or pebbles, very small ones, but dry sand is probably better. Make sure you do it on a 45 degree angle because if you go straight down, of course the flames are going to go straight up and you're going to wind up with your hand on fire. Okay, so make sure 45 degree angle so you don't get burnt. There is, in fact, another way you can put out a torch if you absolutely must, and that is drop the torch on a dry ground, not a wet ground, because remember, we drop it on a wet ground, the fire will spread, it will splatter, there'll be more fire, there'll be flash burn, we don't want that. So drop it on the dry ground and smother that torch with dry sand or stones. And now the fire will go out because you are suffocating the oxygen, you know, you're suffocating the fire, the oxygen will not get to the fire if you do something like that. Here's my secret to you. For all of you who are wondering what the heck was the point of all of this. Secret tip. If you have a torch in your hand at the start of combat, drop the torch on the ground between you and your enemy. Not in the same square as you because that would be stupid. Okay, but in the square in front of you or the space in front of you, between you and your enemy, because now it creates like a, a barrier that they have to work around. Very useful. And you can also push creatures into the torch fire. The torch fire is only going to do one point of fire damage because it's just a torch. But if it's a wet ground, What's it going to do? It's going to spread and flash burn, which is exactly what we want to do if we were to drop the torch in the same space as your enemy. <laughs> My players are going to love this. I'm, I, know I, I know I should not have ever mentioned this to anybody whatsoever, but I have. So dropping the torch on the ground is actually a really good idea, and if the ground is wet, it's an even better idea, and if it's really wet, Make sure you are standing a good distance away when it happens because there's going to be a lot of fire everywhere. Now, if you found this video helpful, fantastic. I have a whole bunch of videos on how to use adventuring gear. Everything you can imagine. It's there, it's in a playlist, you can watch it. If you're not interested in that sort of thing, I have videos for players and dungeon masters on every aspect of the game you can possibly imagine. You're welcome to go and check those out. If you want to support my channel, you can do that on Patreon, where you get access to the live streams and the notes that I make for my videos. It's all typed up. If you want to support it in a different way, maybe you can use the affiliate links to the book depository on Amazon or the merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos to buy merch. Otherwise, just watch my videos. I get AdSense revenue from them if you watch the ads, provided you don't have an ad block running. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.